Okay, so I'm on my way to the Dollar Tree and the thrift store. It looks like somebody important beat me to them. I'm wondering who's in that limo. Haven't, haven't been this anxious to see who's in a limo since uh, since the NWO rolled, rolled up on the WCW. Yeah, I'm going to do Dollar Tree and thrift store here with my buddy Brian and man Kearney. All right. Hey folks, it's Dolph Van Dale, and welcome to the new generically titled Thrift Store Vinyl LPs and CDs. And yes, that is my lame attempt to uh, try to beat the uh, YouTube algorithm and get my video out to a few more people. So, this particular video, this first video, is dedicated to some vinyl I found last Saturday and a couple CDs from uh, St. Vincent de Paul uh, thrift store. It's uh, out in the eastern part of Louisville. Um, yeah, so everything that I am going to show you today cost me one dollar, and I'm sorry to value vinyl. <laughs> he can't ever find stuff at that price. I wish you were. Oh man, I wish. Uh, uh, yeah, I wish he wasn't so far away. I'd take him with me to the uh, sidewalk sale I'm going to on Saturday with even cheaper stuff. So, before I digress any further, let me get started. Uh, we all know... Alright, so this first one's kind of a comedy album. It's kind of a precursor to Weird Al. This was a gentleman by the name of Alan Sherman. Uh, you may not recognize that name, but... I'm sure a lot of people have heard the song that he's most famous for that goes kind of hello mother hello father here I am at Camp Granada so you know we all know that song I think most of us well, all of us old people anyway this is uh, this time Alan Sherman's mother proudly presents Alan Sherman my son the celebrity so, Hello Mother, Hello Father is not on here, but there's some other good songs. Um, let's see if I can get you a track listing. And this album came out on Warner Brothers, Gray Warner Brothers label. We'll say this particular album does have kind of a bad split on the side, but I think I may actually have a copy where the vinyl, the cover's good, but the vinyl isn't all that great. I may do some Frankensteining with uh, this particular copy. All right. E either way, that, that little split, even if I don't have a copy, that little split doesn't really bother me that much. All right, next is a comp. Welcome to Columbia Country. And yes, it has Johnny Cash on it, and it was a dollar, so of course it's coming home, but it, they didn't stop there. Got some good people on here. They've got uh, uh, Lester Flatt and Earl Scruggs, uh, Marty Robbins, the Statler Brothers. So we're doing all right. I don't know everyone on here, but I know quite a few. Johnny Cash sings The Long Black Veil on this album. And this album came out on Columbia. And I don't see a date. All right. Also picked up the very best of the Statler Brothers. This cover is a little frustrating. It came out on Realm Records. Um, in that there, it's the same on both sides, no track listings. There are two albums in here. There's that Brown Realms record label. Albums look in good shape. Uh, very best of the Statler Brothers. 
See if it gives a date on it. Uh, no. 1977. So, there you have it. Statler Brothers. <laughs> All right. Next up, Barbara Streisand, a happening in Central Park. Now, this is a little bit out of my wheelhouse. This would be an album my mother probably would have uh, liked to have had. A very young Barbara Streisand on the back. I did watch a little bit of this concert on YouTube uh, last night. And, uh, yeah, it's a little bit of, out of my wheelhouse. But, uh, man, she, you know, she really does have a great voice. And... Uh, so it just looked too interesting to pick it to, to leave behind, so I had to pick it up. Next up, Billy Vaughn, as requested. The twin sax uh, sound is what he apparently was famous for. I guess that that uh, explains the what looks like twin girls on the front, or is that yeah. Or is she standing in front of a mirror? I don't know. But uh, anyways, this is on Dot Records. Uh, Billy uh, Vaughn was the director of Dot Records. I, I, I looked some stuff on up on Wikipedia. Uh, because I was trying to figure out what the Twin Sax was about. So apparently there was this sound he was known for. Now what I couldn't figure out is... Did he have another saxophone player playing with him all the time? Or did he go back and record one track and then record the other? I don't know what that would do, how that would translate to a to a twin saxophone sound if he was doing it live. Um, unless he didn't really do live performances. I don't know. But, uh, so... Anyway, it does have kind of a unique signature sound. Let's see here. The final. And there's a dot label. So I thought that was interesting. And, you know, before you just write Billy Vaughn off as being thrift store music uh, he had a single that sold over a million copies that's not bad there's a lot of artists that would uh, like to have that uh, have that on their resume alright so the next one uh, Pete Fountain Pete Fountain is a famous clarinetist is that what you call him clarinetist I guess. Yeah. Clarinetist. So, so, so right there. Pete Fountain salutes the great clarinetist. Oh, it's the album title, too. Anyway. <laughs> um, I picked it up. I saw this. Picked it up because I wanted to give it a shot. You know, I really am not a fan of the clarinet. Not yet, anyway. I think it sounds better in orchestra than it does in jazz. But maybe I just haven't heard it, listened to it enough. Because really, if I'm going to be honest, uh, there's very, very little clarinet music in my um, collection. So I picked up Pete Fountain because I know his reputation. Figured this might be worth a spin. Now the next guy I've heard of a lot. I don't know if these are, are you know, sought-after titles of his. It seems like they're on more generic labels, but that's okay. Some melodic Stan Getz. Stan Getz is a famous uh, jazz saxophonist. There's the title, or the track listing. This one came out on Metro. I 
And I got a second one just called Stan Getz. And this one came out on the uh, prestigious Sears label. All right. I got a cat getting into something somewhere around here. Probably Aretha wanting to play. Anyway, so the last album I've got, it's a... Uh, a band that uh, is near and dear to my heart, the Imperials, gospel vocal group, Love is the Thing. And this is way before I really started uh, listening to them. Uh, I really discovered the Imperials in the early 80s when their lineup was uh, uh, Armin Morales, Jim Murray, David Will, and Paul Smith. And of course, I, I went back and got some of their 70s music because my favorite artist, Russ Taff, sang in this group. Uh, but this is even before Russ. This is 69. It's on Impact Records. It is a gatefold. It is one album set on a gatefold. And it's on Impact Records. Now the cover's a bit war. The 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 uh, got some got some wear wear on the front cover. I oh, got some on the back cover too. I don't know who most of this lineup is. I do recognize Armin Morales and Jim Murray. Um, for the time, uh, hey Jake, how you doing, buddy? Uh, for the time, you know, at first I thought, man, this sounds like typical 60s pop, but then, or vocal pop, and, and then I thought, well, you know, that was really pretty, pretty experimental, I guess, by the Imperials, because they weren't really, there weren't really a whole lot of Christian vocal groups that were doing that kind of music, uh, and they were trying to be contemporary. Uh, long before the term contemporary Christian music was ever coined. Um, now, there are several tracks on this album. Um, he Touched Me, which is a famous Bill Gaither tune. Uh, there's a cross metal medley on here, and then the song Sweet, Sweet Spirit. Okay, guys, I got cats trying to invade. Lay down there, Jake. <laughs> All right, and so uh, those sound more traditional uh, Christian uh, vocal group of the time, which would have been closer to Southern Gospel, probably. But uh, then the other stuff sounds sounds uh, more 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 uh, mainstream. So interesting pickup, and that's my records. That's the records that I got. Now I got some cool CDs. And uh, Jake, slide back here just a little bit. Can you slide? Can you slide with me? Just slide with me. Huh? <laughs> How you doing, boy? Why don't you go up here? Just go up here. There you go. Lay down a thing. There's a cat bed up there for you, buddy. Anyway. Back to it. Gaither Vocal Band, I do believe. This is a 2000 album. Uh, great lineup. Um, David Phelps. Uh, Guy Penrod. Bill Gaither. And Mark Lowry. Just glad to pick that up. Then I picked up two of the Homecoming CDs. Gaither Homecoming CDs. Uh, both, I think, were done at the same time. One is Jerusalem. The other is Israel Homecoming. I think they were done at the same time. They both were done in 2005. Um, they probably just did a really big 
program there and split it off into two projects. But I think there was a mistake made, and let me get tell you why. Uh, this one, this album, uh, I was glad to find it because it uh, uh, some of the tracks on it. Uh, let's see. Let's look here. Uh, I've just seen Jesus. I thought that was interesting, uh, featuring Anthony Berger. And the reason I thought that was interesting is because Larnell Harris is singing on this album, and he won a Grammy with a song called "I've Just Seen Jesus" with uh, that he did with Sandy Patty. And I wonder if that's the same tune. I find it odd that Anthony Berger would sing it when. Uh, Mar when uh, Larnell Harris is singing on this project. Larnell Harris is on here singing the song Amen. Uh, also was glad to pick this up. Uh, a lot of Danville connections. Danville, Kentucky, my hometown. Because Larnell Harris is from Danville. Moved to Louisville just like I did. But he did it a lot earlier than I did. I think he's a little over 10 years older than I am. But we attended the same high school, just at different times. And then um, Allison Durham Spears sings Upon This Rock, and uh, which is probably made most famous by Sandy Patty. Uh, but Allison Durham uh, Spears, she's got that kind of voice. And I know that because she grew up in Danville. I, in fact... Uh, we sang briefly in the same youth choir. Uh, so it's, it's good to see Allison on this CD as well. Um, and of course, you, you can see there's the Gaither Vocal Band. And then Russ Taff is uh, pictured here. And I was a little confused. That was the other confusion about this album. Because Russ is nowhere on this album to be found not singing any type of solo anyway but we come over here we got jerusalem um larnell's on this as well and uh but russ is singing bethlehem galilee and gethsemane now on this cover uh, right there is larnell i think that it was supposed to be larnell where russ is here in Russ where Larnell is and that's the reason why the mix-up but yeah Larnell sings I walk today where Jesus walked on this one got some other people I really like like walking in Jerusalem with Buddy Green and the Isaacs good stuff and finally last but not least I saw, spotted this one and just had to pick it up. And it is from the late 90s. Will Smith. Big Willie style. And you may be thinking, man, Dale, that's kind of out of your wheelhouse, isn't it? What are you doing buying that? Well, it's like this. Getting diggy with it. Getting jiggy with it. Yep. Sometimes you just got to get jiggy with it. So, Will Smith, glad to pick this up and crank it up. And also, he's got the Men in Black on here as well. Going to enjoy that. So, that's my uh, haul for this, uh, for this thrift video. So, I'm going to get busy editing, and we'll see you soon.